Greetings to all my Harvest LA brothers and sisters. My name is Ning and I'm one of the student advisors. After more than a year of the stay at home orders, finally, for the first time, we gathered in person to celebrate Easter together. Christ is risen, yay. I hope to see some of you in person over the next few weeks as we um, have this limited um, in-person gathering. Today, my sharing is for Thursday, April the 8th, and the reading comes from Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 through 25, and I'll be reading from the NLT. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend? Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? Then Moses was afraid, thinking, everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what he had happened, and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came, as usual, to draw water and fill the water troughs for their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the, the, from the shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. When the girls returned to rule their father, he asked, Why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew waters for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he? Their father asked. Why did you leave him there? Invite him to come and eat with us. Moses accepted the invitation and he settled there with him. In time, Ruel gave Moses his daughter Zipporah to be his wife. Later, she gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom, for he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. Years passed, and the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help, and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. I always find the stories in Genesis and Exodus interesting. As an immigrant, I can't help but see the parallel in my own experiences with that of the first generation of the Israelite immigrants when Jacob's entire household moved to Egypt. Many generations passed. In Exodus, we see that Moses is born into the tribes of Levi and into a, t into a time when the Hebrews are being oppressed and persecuted. Moses, however, was adopted into the Egyptian royal family by the princess and raised as a prince of Egypt. The passage today opens with many years later. We're not told exactly how many years, but in Stephen's speech in Acts chapter 7, where he recounted the story, he mentioned that Moses was 40 years old when this happened. And in verse 11, he goes to visit his own people, the Hebrews. This means that by now Moses knew that he's a Hebrew and not Egyptian. We're not told details of how Moses grew up, but he was well raised because Stephen also said that Moses was taught all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was powerful in both speech and action. I feel with the racial tensions today, I can relate to Moses. Not only do Egyptians and the Hebrews have completely different belief systems, values, among others, the Hebrews were being enslaved by the Egyptians. The text doesn't say why Moses went to visit his fellow Hebrews, but I believe he was exploring his identity and roots, like many of us may have done so from time to time. 
So he goes and sees the Hebrew oppressed and stood up for his Hebrew brother and in the process kills the Egyptian oppressor. Next day, he goes again. And this time he, tr he tries to play peacemaker among his Hebrew people. In his mind, he was one of them. We're all brothers and friends, right? But then the Hebrew rejected him, essentially asking him, who are you to judge our, and quote unquote, Hebrew business? So he's now rejected as a Hebrew and he can't just go back to be an Egyptian prince either because he killed an Egyptian and the Pharaoh is now pursuing him. So at this point in time, Moses basically lost everything he knew. He was born a Levite in Egypt, raised as an Egyptian royalty, who are the ones oppressing his fellow Hebrews. He then tried to make contact with his Hebrew roots, but ended up in conflict with both the Hebrews and Egyptians. Everyone rejected him. He is left with no one to identify with. So he fled to Midian as a refugee, which is yet another foreign land, as he named his son Gershon. And he spends the next 40 years there, settling down, making himself a family. His wife was a Midianite. His sons were all born there. Moses must have struggled inside. But on the surface, Moses is now living among and living just like a Midianite. I feel Moses' story spells imposter syndrome. So far, I've talked about the cultural ethnic side of Moses. He being a Hebrew Egyptian, a Midianite, but in addition, Moses also had the identities of a prince, a royalty, a son, an adopted son, a peacemaker, a murderer, a fugitive, a shepherd, a husband, a son-in-law, a father, and eventually God's agent in leading the Israelites out of Egypt. So whatever experiences you may have gone through, God knows, and not only does he know, he has a good purpose and plan for you and perfect timing, you know, in our last verse, he knows when to act. Moses being rejected and lost, and all of his conflicts and struggles eventually made him who he is and the person that God was able to call and use. And did he make mistakes along the way? Oh, sure. But God specializes in working with and through people who screw up. If he can turn a murderer around, God sure can help you and me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word in the book of Exodus that we learn you're not only a powerful God, but you are one who cares and shows mercy to your people. We pray that through our struggles, you will make something useful in us and in the process, allow us to become closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Bye.